Oh, first I want to say one thing. I, I People that are into watches, now is the time. If, if you're looking for a watch, if you're considering maybe buying a watch, now is the time to support the micro brands. A lot of micro brands are hurting. All right, guys. I want to welcome you all to the channel. I got a great guest today. We got Abe Weiss. He, him and um, Craig, has Craig runs R two A watches, and you know they do Vostok Europe, uh, Stramansky, a bunch of other ones. And I met Abe at the Microlux show in Chicago last year, and we've hit it off. And We've been dying to work together, and now we're finally getting some chances to, and I'm super happy to have him on. Hey, if you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the industry. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Abe, uh, like you said. Um, I um, got, when I was 13 year old for my bar mitzvah, my grandfather gave me a uh, gift, a Mavado watch. Um, I... Uh, that was my only watch for my everyday beater watch for about 15 years. I worked as a, as a car mechanic and then the other job that uh, a lot of hands on, the, the watch got pretty beat up. Mm. Um, so I got to a point where I started looking into different watches and I started noticing um, one of the things that always um, interests me was mechanicals. Um, mm -hmm. different, I had um, old IBM typewriters and I was and IBM Selectric is amazing how mechanically how mechanical it works and how levers push the springs and that's how it works. And that always interests me. And and when I started looking at the watches, I noticed that it's one of the only things that are still available today that you can buy today mainstream that is mecha completely mechanical, that it works pretty much the same way it worked 50 years ago, 100 yeah. years ago. Hundreds of years ago, yeah. And, <laughs> and that, that, uh, that is... That was very interesting to me, and I got into watches, and um, um, one thing led to another, and now I, ha I own um, I, I own probably around 250 watches myself, um, wow. and, uh, and I uh, became more and more interested in watches and started buying watches, and uh, so one day I, I, I ran across a... Uh, watch on uh I, I it was i think it might have been an ad or someone posted a watch i never heard of the brand called bastak europe and it was a very interesting watch it was the uh the second lunacode um it, it's now long discontinued but that watch was really interesting to me it was actually a quartz but it, it's a very interesting quartz and um over the years i learned that um there's very interesting quartzes out there and i beg people to not uh, not blow away quartz just because it's quartz. Yes, there are some very cheap, generic two-hand quartz watches out there, but there's also some very interesting uh, quartz complications. Um, and there's very interesting build ones. There's a lot of, uh, now, especially with the chronographs, there's a lot of uh, what I call mecha quartzes, where mm -hmm. it's, 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 almost, it's, it's a jeweled mechanical quartz chronograph that is powered by the it, it's a jeweled mechanical chronograph powered by the quartz movement. So the only thing, instead of having a, 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 a um, mainspring, it, it's powered by the by quartz. But it's still mechanical jeweled movement. There's a lot of very interesting quartzes out there. So um, um, I, I, I reached out to Craig, and it's a long, interesting story. Uh, we, uh, our first interaction was not very, very nice. We ended up yelling and screaming at each other. And Craig okay, was, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get into that. Okay. We got to hear this story. <laughs> okay. So, uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Now I opened the, that can. So, um, <laughs> I called, I found that watch on a, on a Friday. And I and I looked in, I had no idea who Vastek Europe is, who carries Vastek Europe. So, I did my Google searches. Where do I buy Vastek Europe? And I got, back then, they were still called Russia to All. Now, there are two A watches. Um, the R2A is where you buy these watches. So uh, I reached out to R2A and I spoke to Craig. And Craig told me that this is a discontinued watch and we only have one left. If you want it, you need to buy it now. I took that as a sales pitch of someone that, that is trying to get me to, to uh, sign right away. So I said, I'm not going to fall for this. I'm a salesman too. You know, I'm, like, I'm not falling for this. <laughs> so I said, I'll, I'll let you know. And, and, I, and I, just, I hung up. Knowing that I'm buying this from someone else, I'm I don't fall for pitches like that. 
so I called around and um, I found at the time Mark from Island Watches was selling stuff like mm-hmm. yours. So I called him and I say, you know, this is the watch I'm looking for. And said, oh, dude, that's a discontinued watch, not available anywhere. You ain't going to have me. You're not going to find one. And that's when it hit me. Wait a second. Maybe Craig wasn't, maybe this wasn't a selfish. Maybe he really only has one. <laughs> so by the time, by the time Mark responded was Saturday, um, Saturday morning. So I'm immediately calling back Craig. And I, wherever I go, I'm hitting a dead end. No one has this watch. And everybody's telling me it's a discontinued watch. So I'm calling back Craig, and uh, and uh, and he's not picking up the phone. And I can hear his the office phone is transferring to a cell phone because I can hear from the voicemail that it's a cell phone. Yeah. So I keep on calling again and again, and it transfers to voicemail. So after about the fifth or sixth time he calls, and he picks up and he goes, "What? <laughs> oh, I I need a watch." <laughs> and he goes, "Dude, I'm I'm at Six Flags with my kids. <laughs> Call me during business hours." <laughs> So that was my first interaction with Craig. Um, he <laughs> called me back that night. And at the time, I lived um, all the way South Jersey, close to, um, close to Delaware. Um, the next morning, Sunday morning, me and my wife got in the car, and we drove five hours each way to get that watch. <laughs> Persistent, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I, I didn't want to lose it. Yeah. Um, so that, that was my... Uh, that was my first interaction with Craig. We became, um, I, I became a huge fan of the brand. Um, I've had a ton of watches and I, I, I get it. I, before that, uh, before that happened, I was into uh, name brand watches. IWC was basically my brand. I had six or seven IWC watches. Um, I had a Rolex. I, I had all the name brands. And the first time I got a Vastek Europe, it, it blew me away. The build quality was way beyond anything I have ever seen. Uh, so, uh, so with that, um, I, 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 with Vastek Europe was my gateway to the micro brand. I wouldn't call Vastek Europe a micro brand. They are, they are, they are available at resellers. They, they, they are building. I'd say like independent. An independent, they are. Yeah, independent is good. But that got me into um, the micro brand. To, to look at watches that I would never consider looking. And and what I discovered was unbelievable what's out there. I mean, the, the, the iconic watch is a perfect example. You know, you, I just got a McDowell time watch. I I just sized it. I was impressed by the, the, the size of the thickness of the screws that holds the bracelet together. is. And like you said, if you buy that same watch from a mainstream brand or anything like that, you're paying... Yeah, triple that, and then you also got the Swiss-made watches that you know a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't realize a lot of these Swiss-made watches are still very, very much come from China. Yeah, look, uh, look, you know, look, look at look at, at the shortages movement. they're having now. Look at the look, shortages they're having now. Yeah, happened to China. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, at a, at a limiting movement, that is the, the the Swiss movement. Limiting <laughs> movements are like crazy because they can't, they, they don't have parts because of what happened in China. For <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, this is one of the things I really, really like about Swiss watch company, those guys, uh, the family run deal. Uh, great group of guys, but I've followed them for a while. And, you know, the dad, he used to work with Swatch Group. And that was his job was uh, was quality control for the Etta movement. Guess where he was stationed? Malaysia, and, you know, places like that, because that's where the parts were coming from. Yeah, these movements are assembled in Switzerland, but the parts that they're assembling came from China. So it's not like they're getting anything 100% Swiss made, unless you look at like Olivier More. Uh, Philippe Silva, you know, those guys like that, they're making watches in their basement or their little shop and they're sourcing products from just a couple of miles radius from them. And, you know, that's true watchmaking. So I want to say one thing about China. I don't consider China a, 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 a bad a bad place to buy. I mean, your iPhones Absolutely. are China. 
Yeah, every, everything you have is made in China. There's quality and there's junk and there's everything in between made in China. What bothers me about the Swiss watch is not that it's made in China, but they lie and say that it's not. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm glad you cleared that up because, you know, Chinese manufacturing has come so far. I mean, they're making incredible watches, not just watches, but a lot of things that they do. Their engineering and manufacturing has come so far that, you know, it, it very much rivals, especially with Japanese manufacturing and even Swiss, you know. So whenever there's that black cloud over, you know, Chinese made watches or this or that, you know, it, it's kind of like, well, you don't really realize what's on your wrist right now. <laughs> you know, you don't realize how much of those parts uh, in your watch came from China. Yeah. So with that said, uh, <laughs> talking about a, a micro brand. Oh, first I want to say one thing. I, I People that are into watches, now is the time. If, if you're looking for a watch, if you're considering maybe buying a watch, now is the time to support the micro brands. A lot of micro brands are hurting. If you go through the list of micro brands, a lot of websites are 404 in now. Websites that worked a month ago are no longer operational, which means the, 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 the guy doesn't have watches to sell and he took his site offline. If you are looking to buy a watch, now is the time to support the micro brand. Now is the time to support the person that works hard in his basement to make you a watch that has more value and more quality and is better than anything you can buy from anywhere else. Support your micro brand. Buy yeah. one now. This is a movement that I, I very much want to be involved in and, and, and that I've made strides to, to kind of get the word out there. I've been working with Mitchell Timepieces, trying to help him out. See, the thing is, uh, and, and my and my own personal campaign suffered a lot, you know. Um, Kickstarter right now is a crapshoot. Yeah. I don't blame the people, you know. I mean, people are out of work, and and you know, it's hard to make that kind of a purchase. But at the same time, if we don't do something to support these brands, you know, we're not going to have them. They're not going to be be able to continue to make these products, and we're it'll be a, a huge injustice for the world because some of these brands come out with such amazing pieces and just the thought of them not being around in the next year, it, it's sad. You know, I mean, you think about, um, uh, let's say like Thomas Orr, he has amazing watches. And if, if he can't get funded, if he can't have a successful campaign, and get his products out on the market, the thought of him not being around, it just, I can't even fathom that, you know? And uh, you look at, like I said, Mitchell timepieces, we got um, Andy over at Advisor, his campaign suffered big time. Um, Golshan with Spectre Time, his campaign suffered big time. And, you know, one of the things that I'm putting together to try to help everybody through this time is the other project that I'm working on with Unified Time. And what we're going to be doing there is offering brands a way to get their products on the market at a much, much lower cost. Um, you know, a lot of these, you know, one of the biggest hurdles for a micro brand, especially micro brands and independent brands that's just starting out, is that, you know, they're kind of back against the wall with uh, uh, minimum order requirements. So, you know, they have to guarantee that they're going to sell so much, but yet they haven't been on the market yet. They can't really gauge that. So it's, it's really scary, you know, and for a, a new brand to draw up his own designs, get the engineer to uh, make them uh, renders and stuff like that, and then to actually put those out, for the world to see it's such a scary scary time you know you you've put months and sometimes years into this design and then you put it out there and you never know if there's going to be like an internet troll out there to shit all over your work you know what i mean and and that's i i don't tolerate that very well you know what i mean like if i see something like that in any of my groups i shut it down immediately because you know, I know what these guys go through. You know, I, I know how scary it is to put a design out there and not know 
how people are going to feel about it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I support all these brands. We're going to do whatever we can with unified time, with creating programs to help get these watches out there and, uh, and, and hopefully keep these brands afloat uh, until everything gets back to normal. So, okay, now you told us you told us how you and Craig first met. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the 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 best introduction. <laughs> so, how do you go from that introduction, you're buying the Vostok Europe watch from them and then how does it branch into now you guys been working together for how many years? So, I I've, I've been working with him full-time now, um going on Gotta be going on three years now. So we, we um, as, as I said, I fell in love with Vastek Europe. I, uh, I, I started buying more from him, chatting with him about new watches that are coming out. He was showing me um, different watches, and we became very close friends. And um, we have a lot in common. Um, a lot of things that uh, a lot we like the same watches, and we have a lot of com- a lot of things in common with other watches. Uh, I, I ended up going, there used to be a big Joe's event. Um, it was in New York, Staten Island, New York. And I, I think it's, unfortunately, it doesn't happen anymore. I think the last one, the last one was a year ago and they had very few participants. They, they can't, they pretty much canceled it. Um, it was, it, it was a memory of um, a watch collector that lived in Staten Island that I didn't, I never knew him, but um, he was before my time. But uh, his friends kept on doing a watch event, and at one event, um, I met, I, I, I saw Craig was there, and we had a long, long conversation, mm-hmm. and we became very close friends. And I happened to uh, move to Connecticut, and when I moved to Connecticut, I, Craig, asked, Craig asked me if I want to work. I asked Craig, actually, if, does he have anything that I can do for him until I find something here? And he said, would be, I started going into the office. Uh, once a week, and then with that, ended up being two twice a week. And before I know it, I am there nine days a week now. Well, <laughs> now, now I'm home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's actually funny. We 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 every time we do something out of work, um, um, we end up coming up with the greatest ideas. Where we always tell Craig we need to s- spend time together out of work more often because that's when we come up with the greatest idea. Yes. Yeah. A lot of work goes in. You know, it's not like Vastek Europe picks a, a, a cool item or, or a Pramzies picks a cool item and just say, well, let, let, let's call it that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of work goes into um, what, what can we what inspiration can we get from that from that item and put it into the watch? You know, this is this is our first and as of now, our only DNA. And I'm we don't uh, this. This was our first DNA watch. I had actual pieces of um, the wall. Um, yeah. This will be a DNA watch because it has actual pieces of the, of the train itself. Yeah. And what we're doing it, what we're doing, and you'll see on the, I, it might be hard to come through the video, but on the on the picture that Ivan will put up, you'll see, you can clearly see this old metal in here around the, around the dial. And that is actual metal from the train that we're, sitting out we're sitting there and stamping them and that's awesome man. And a lot of work goes in to make that, that brings up a really good point you know um when we're talking about <clears throat> pricing and uh you know there's a large part of the community that kind of feels like they have things figured out you know they feel like okay a watch with this specs should be in this price range and you know and then they start looking at okay well i can get a movement from ebay for fifty dollars so why is this watch why is this company charging me five hundred dollars for this but the thing is is like you know a lot of these people don't realize the design hours the manufacturing costs the mode fees the you know just the all the time that goes into it, the the thought process, you know, the trial and error, the money that's wasted on some of the trial and error, you know, like uh, that's one of the things. Like, and I'm guilty of it, you know. Whenever I first got started into it, like really getting into watches, whenever I uh, started with 
uh, being a watch gang member back in the day, you know, I kind of fell into that as well. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I get this watch from watch gang for $300. So why can't I buy it from another company for $300? You know, if, if, if they've charged $300 here, you know, so I kind of took on that aspect as well. But then once I, you know, made friends in the industry and I started working with, um, working with my buddy Rob and uh, working with some uh, different projects, I started to get a look at the back end of things. And, and I started to realize exactly how much goes into it. And, you know, a lot of times brands aren't making a whole lot of money. A perfect example is what we were talking earlier. You look how many, just because we have, what's now, we were in week number four of hardship in the, in the United States. Look how many micro brands are out of business already. We're, we're working on very, very small margins. Yeah, there's not a lot of, of money in it. I probably won't get back the investment yeah. that I've dumped into it so far, you know, and that's even with crowdfunding and everything. So <laughs> it's not like we're making a ton of money, you know, like it takes years of and, and, and several models before you really start turning a profit and, and start being self-sustaining, you know. Um, you guys have been in it for a long time, so you y'all have been through that period. Yeah. But I'm sure y'all remember what it was like getting to that point, you know, and and, and struggling at the beginning. And it, you know, and that's where a lot of these brands are. And like you said, if we don't do something to help raise awareness and and try to help get these brands some sort of income and some sort of um, business to to help them stay afloat then the world's going to be without them we're, we're just not going to have them i'm begging people now i'm not telling you go buy a watch if you if you but if you're in the market for a for one of the swiss mega brands consider buying a micro brand instead i did it myself yeah yeah absolutely i only buy micro i i don't i don't have any um I don't have anything against the Swiss market or anything like that. It's just the micro world is what I love. You know, I, I love the industry. I love the people in the industry. I love the, the community and, you know, the support that I was shown throughout my campaign was just unreal, you know? Um, and, and like I said, I don't blame anybody for backing out. We're in uncertain times. Uh, most of the people reached out to me personally and, and was like, look, man, I'm sorry. And, and that means a lot, you know, that they, they actually felt like they needed to apologize to me, which they didn't whatsoever. You know, I completely understood it. But it's like once my campaign was finished, I, I, I realized I lost over half of my backers. And this is all due to the virus. Over half of my backers. And then even after the campaign, there was like over 6,000 that couldn't make the payment. Yeah, so it, it really cuts you down to, to bare bones. So when it when I talk about how I'm I'm not making any money on this, I'm like I'm really not making any money on it. I, I, that's another thing I want to mention. People looked at my when, when this wasn't Kickstarter. This 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 was a Kickstarter campaign, and people said, "Look how much money you made." People don't understand that they number what they see is just people who committed to it. That's a whole different number than who, who really paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in good times, you, you, you're lucky if you get 70% yeah. of the commitment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 70, that would be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm, 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 I'll be happy with 20. <laughs> yeah. People look at, people go in the beginning of the, oh, this still has four, this still has 30 days to go, and it's a pretty cool looking watch. Sure, why not? And then, when it, then at the end, when it becomes real, when they say, give me your credit card number, then oh, $400, no, I don't have it. No. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes it very hard to, to run a, a, a good campaign and, and kind of plan for the future. Just like, you know, okay, it was my fault that I had started production early, okay? Like, we wanted to produce produce the watches and we want to deliver early as possible so i got a jump start on production so i made commitments two days after i make commitments backers start dropping out so now i've already made commitments to my manufacturer and now i'm i'm about 
twenty-five thousand less in my budget than I thought I was going to be. So now I got to make up that money from somewhere. And where do I do that? My retail deals, making slim, slim margins just to get the production paid for. So you know, it, it can be done. It could, you know, there's things that you can do. But the main thing is getting the watches out there, getting them on the wrist, and you know. Once you do that, especially for a new brand, once your first watches are out there, people are wearing them, people are talking about them, then I feel like hopefully the next one will go much better. We won't, hopefully won't have a pandemic, you know. I, I got to say, I'm really excited by Unify Time for some reason. And I don't understand why Kickstarter doesn't care about watches. They don't want watches. The fact that they don't even have a section for watches boggles my mind as many watches are on kickstarter yeah why have a section for it i mean we the the, the 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 us when we put out a watch we have to decide should we put it on the on the jewelry should we put it on the design should we, yeah <laughs> they, they just don't care about us they don't they don't try to make it better they don't yeah and, and that's just it man it, it, it it's a flawed system especially on indiegogo like i tried yeah. to set up an indiegogo campaign I was completely lost. I mean, there's so many, and my campaign just got lost in a sea of, yeah, like, I have no idea how to boost it up unless you pay uh, a firm thousands of dollars to keep it on top for you. And then it's like, what do you, yeah. But if there's you put a up- flaw in the system, and I'm hoping that with unified time we can correct that. You know, Mitchell Time Pieces, he doesn't, he doesn't have the fun. This is all a side project for him, you know. This is something that he does on the side because he loves watches, he loves aviation, and he wants to create something that like-minded people would love and enjoy too. So he it, it, he's not working with a giant budget, and he really needed the backers to make his campaign work. Luckily, I've set him up with the program that we're building with Unified Time, so he's still going to be able to go into production. Um, we're just... Kickstarter, I just, I don't advise to go on Kickstarter anymore. Like, I wasn't going to do it. I was completely against it, and it was a last-minute decision that I decided, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put up a campaign, and, you know, I'm glad I did. It did get some more eyes on the project, but, you know, how do you know? How, how do you know what's going to happen? You know, Kickstarter's so unpredictable. Yeah, we, we definitely need a, a, uh, we we need a we, the watches need their own platform and unified Absolutely. doing that. I mean, if if you're gonna if you're working on a children's coloring book, Kickstarter is the perfect place for you. They will give you the support. They will have your section. They will have an area for you. They will yeah. they will push people to your campaign. They Kickstarter doesn't understand what a watch is. They 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 build in there where it's this weird jewelry item that does stuff, and then they yeah. got to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and like you said, there's so many watches on the platform, so it's like, why, why, why not? Why not have a section for us? And and with Unified Time, our brands are going to have a target audience. You know, you're not going to have people that's thumbing through Kickstarter or Indiegogo that is looking for the next Magic: The Gathering game or the next yeah. uh, kid in his backyard trying to make a music album or whatever. People are going to be there looking for watches. They're going to look for a discount on watches. They're going to pay that price, wait the time, and, and and be a part of something. You know, we're filling our community with real, true enthusiasts, and that's where it's going to be. Uh, you know, people that care about the brands, not these people that want to serial flippers. You know, they they, they want to just get watches. At, a cheap price so that they could sell it for more later on. That's not what we're looking for in this community. We want real enthusiasts that actually wants to keep the watches. We're going to have a buy, sell trade program with some escrow services, but you know, for the main part, it's going to be a fun community and everything will be right there. You know, everything for the brands, we're going to have a business to business marketplace for the brands where, if they need watch manufacturing, I got my partners in the in manufacturing are offering the lowest MOQs in the industry. We've got 
uh, packaging manufacturers, we've got product photographers, we got um, social media management, business coaching, campaign coaching. I mean, anything that you need to launch a brand or a product, you can find it on our business to business marketplace. Get a good deal on it. We'll help you through the whole process. And bam, you got your watch on the market for much less than if you go out and try to find all this stuff yourself. Yeah, and we're excited. You know, we have we have uh, we're 15 years. Craig has been 15 years in this business. Um, he's been building his own watches way before Pramzy has happened, mm. and other brands that no they are no longer around. Um, we we have a lot of experience with it, and we understand that your you you and all the other people that build watches are not our competition. You we're part we're all in this together. Absolutely, and that's key. That's key, you know, like I would I, if if somebody is on my site and they're looking for a specific watch that's not a dive watch, I'm not going to try to talk them into a dive yep. watch. If, if they're looking for something Russian inspired or this or that and they come to my site, I'm not going to try to pitch them an iconic. I'm going to be like, hey, you know what? Over at R2A, they got these uh, Sturmansky watches, really cool stuff. Go check them out and I'll send them your way. I'm not going to try to you know convince somebody to buy something that they don't want i'm going to tell them to go buy from my friends and you, the, our real competition is the, are the conglomerates in in switzerland who wants yeah. us to go out of business so they can sell the basic now they can only sell the basic watch for five thousand dollars because we are their competition they mm -hmm. want us to be gone so their watches will start at fifteen thousand that's what they want yeah and those are the real competition and we we are in this together if if you or or any of the watchmakers the independent watchmakers need help anything that we can help please reach out to us you know we we Absolutely. have experience we built three successful watches and we have two more in the making mm -hmm. reach out to us we'll we'll help you out whatever we can lead Absolutely. ideas how to do things you know we're, I we're have, I have probably a good 10 to 15 brands that I talk to on a regular basis every day, um, trying to help them with strategies, trying to help them with uh, marketing, you know, posting for them on Facebook and this and that. Uh, our, our goal is to get you a watch like this on your wrist for, for, we hope we can somehow down the road do this for $200. It's not real. It's not reality and we will never get there. <laughs> this, this, the Swiss goal is to get you a watch like this and get you to pay 20000 for it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And like I said, whenever whenever I first started, my, my goal was, okay, I'm going to make a killer watch. My margins are going to be really thin, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it to where as many people could possibly get a good quality watch as possible. You yeah. know, the virus kind of stepped in the way and, 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 and got in the way of that, but you know, that was the goal, and I think I did a pretty good job at it. I have some cases set aside for a couple of, of special edition runs that I'm going to do for the Halicline. After that, we're not making anymore. We're going to keep that. That was the first watch. We did our thing with it. Now let's move forward, and we're going to retire that and only, only focus on uh, new designs from now on. So everybody that got their Halicline, only 350 pieces will ever be made. So you got something that's uh, very limited. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, that's something I wanted to do for the people that, that stuck it in, stuck it out, you know, during the pandemic, you know, like that means a lot to me, you know, all of you guys that bought watches from me while we don't know what's going on and you actually followed through with the campaign like, that's so huge to me, and I can't thank you guys enough. Like, I know for myself, like, I would have been worried and, and, and maybe had to pull out myself because, you know, you got your family to take care of. As much as I try to support all the brands and stuff, you know, you still got family. So knowing that y'all were able to take that $450 and, and still back my, my idea was, was just it's extremely humbling, extremely humbling. And, and also, I will tell the guys that are wearing the watches, if you post uh, a wrist shot, there's nothing more rewarding to the to the creator of the watch. And, and I, 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 like, I can't stress it enough. We mentioned it already several times. If you 
are planning to buy a watch in the next five or six months, if they have the money, do it now and do it from a micro brand. There's plenty of them out there to choose from, and and there's plenty of quality micro brands to choose from. Go through my channel. Go, uh, you know, look at the uh, Everest that I did a a a, uh, review on just last month. Uh, uh, Sangamon watches. They're self funded. You know, they didn't do Kickstarter. They put up a big chunk of money to create these watches, and now sales are dying. So they're just. You know, it it, it it takes a lot for a brand to do that. And, and you know, now they're sitting on inventory that is hard to move. And let's help them move some inventory. They're beautiful watches. They're worth the money for them. Like Abe said here, you know, if, if you were buying it from the Swatch Group, you'd be paying $7,000 for it. Here you can get it for 500 bucks. I mean, that's just the way micro brands work, independent brands work. So, you know, many that never needed service from a micro brand will tell you that the, the, the brand owner feels a connection. They will bend over backwards for you. They, they, they're not they're not a company that that is run by a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of bookkeepers that they need to they need to be at a certain amount of budget. And they if, and if they have to fix your watch, you're screwing up their budget. And now they have to make money elsewhere. <laughs> so they're looking for any excuse not to do it. Every micro brand owner has pride. He put in hours and hours of work and sweat into this project and he wants you to be happy with it i have mm. never reached out to a micro brand that didn't bend over backwards for me when i hardly ever have problems because the micro brands really do a good job in general because they 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 doing one at a time and 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 they put so much effort into it and so much time you you most likely will not have an issue but if you do You'll be surprised how most micro brands will want their baby to be running right, and they will do whatever it takes to get it right. And, and there's there's something to that because it it's the person that takes care of you has a connection to the product and 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 wants you to be happy versus someone that wants to make sure they don't get fired. They, yeah. <laughs> all they care about is that they still keep on getting their twenty dollars an hour, and and they will do the minimum they can that as long as they keep on getting the twenty dollars an hour they that their job was acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's why I never understood with some of this service, like, you know, you know, they call it service, but it's just, you know, it seems like they're, they're not service for you. They're service for the company. <laughs> you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like they're, they're, they're working the service department, but their service is to make sure that the company ain't coming out of any more money. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, all right, Abe. Well, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. It looks like I've got some editing to do here, but I've had a lot of fun. Any last words, anything else that you wanted to uh, talk about while we have the audiences captivated right now? I'll probably remember that as soon as we hang up. But uh, <laughs> like like, you, like uh, you said before, if anybody has any questions about any of our brands or anything, reach out to me. I'm, uh, I'm all over Facebook. I'm uh, Abe at R2AWatches.com. Um, if you need my cell phone number, I'll give that to you as well. Whatever, however you need, to, whenever any issue that I can help you, reach out to me anytime, and I'll do whatever I can to help you and the other micro brand owners and this whole community. If 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 you grow, we grow, and we all grow. And if if we collapse, all you're being left is Casios or twenty thousand dollars to get a decent watch. Not that Casio is anything wrong, but if you want the mechanical a watch that was made the way a watch was made, Casio is not the place for you. Well, I think we covered it all. I think so, man. Um, well, I'm extremely happy to have had you on the show here. Um, and welcome to Watch With Us Media, as well as the Watch Reviewers, as well as Watch Me Unboxing. And um, welcome to Unified Time. You're going to be one of our main um, launching brands. So we're going to have uh, a limited launch of just only about 10 brands, and R2A is going to be one of them. So keep an eye out for that. There's going to be a lot of information coming out here soon. We got um, the new prototypes from R2A and Pramzius there. I'm going to be showing some pictures at the end of the video here. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being a part of our day here. Y'all have a good one. Any last words? 
Keep on watching. <laughs> All right, brother. You be good, and uh, I'm going to get this edited and get it on out there. That's good. I'll talk to you. All right, brother.